Never thought I'll see Nvidia releasing the supercards again, but hey, they're back after missing out on the RTX 30 series. This here is the RTX 4070 Super and it will be available for 599 USDs. We have tested it against the 4070 and 3090 just so we can see how much faster it is and whether the 4070 Super is worth the upgrade. Now, if we look at both the cards right here, we can see that the 4070 Super has an almost identical design form factor to the 4070. It is small and compact, a great fit for small form factor builds. However, the new cards has a stealthy design with a darker tone and no LED lightings. If you're one of those who prefer to have zero LED lightings in your system, this is a considerable option for you. As for the power, it uses the PCIe Gen 5 headers and Nvidia recommend using at least a 650W power supply for this card. Of course, an adapter will be included with the card, so you can still use it with your existing power supply. Display output options on the 4070 Super FE are the usual single HDMI and three display ports. But we have seen other partner brands that offers two HDMI ports and two display ports. Now let's get into the numbers. Here's the test system specs for your reference if you wanted to know what kind of system we're using for this test. Okay, starting off with the rest of performance. Nvidia has marketed the 4070 Super for 1440p gaming, but in reality, it is powerful enough to be able to run a handful of AAA titles at 4K resolution with over 60 FPS. It runs even faster than the 3090. The exception will be Alan Wake 2 and Cyberpunk. In our case, where the average frames observed is at around 40 plus minus FPS and better results can still be seen on the 3090. Scaling down to resolution of 1440p, the 4070 Super now runs mostly on par to the 3090. For titles where the 4070 Super runs better, the gain we have observed is at about 13 to 18%. Now, similar patterns can be seen on 1080p resolution as well, but I don't think anyone should be spending $599 and use it for only 1080p gaming. Now, for the ray tracing performance, we'll be leaving out DLSS3 for this test as we wanted to see the base ray tracing performance of the 4070 Super against the 3090 without frame generation because clearly the RTX 40 series cards will have the unfair advantage over any old cards. For the settings, we are going with the usual configuration, highest graphics settings, ray tracing on ultra preset, and DLSS on quality preset. At 4K resolution, the majority of the titles we have tested can achieve a very playable 60 plus FPS frame rates. The 4070 Super struggles with titles that are much more demanding such as Alan Wake 2, Cyberpunk, and Metro Exodus. For 1440p resolution, the 4070 Super easily overpower both 3090 and 4070 in almost every title we have tested. From the result, a minimum 70 FPS on average can be seen on Alan Wake 2 and better performance of up to 20% over the 3090 for the rest. That goes without saying for 1080p with the 4070 Super destroying its competition. For DLSS3, it's been more than a year since Nvidia announced the feature and there's more than a handful of titles out there 
that have their S3 support now. However, NVIDIA didn't stop just right there. And in fact, DLSS 3.5 was announced just before FSR3 was made available. While frame generation is no longer an exclusive feature of the RTX 40 series card, the new ray reconstruction feature is something to look forward to if it's done right. As of now, I think it will still take a while before we can see more adoption of this feature be it existing titles or newer upcoming titles. Moving on to power draw and thermals. While we have observed a similar GPU load temperature on both the 4070 Super and 3090, the power efficiency of the 4070 Super is very impressive. From our test, the peak power draw of the 3090 is recorded at about 350 watts, while the 4070 Super only draws about 220 watts on load. This is even more remarkable as the 4070 Super delivers a better overall performance. With that being said, a 650 watt power supply is enough for the 4070 Super and we might be able to see models from the partner that comes with a single 8-pin PCIe header as well. Okay, seeing the performance numbers, the 4070 Super is without a doubt another great mid high range cards from Nvidia. To be more precise, it is technically a compact version of the 3090 that only requires a 650 watt per supply to operate. This makes it a great option for those who want to build a really powerful yet compact system. For the starting price of $599, it is a worth it upgrade if you're coming from an RTX 20 series or older card. Though, I'm actually more interested in the price adjustments for the 4070 as the launch price for this card is the same 599 back then. Now, since 4070 Super is taking over the same price point, I expect the 4070 will be getting a much more competitive price. So that's all for this video. What's your take on the 4070 Super? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in the next one.